seasonal indices, calculating seasonal indices, and deseasonalizing a time series. So we need to be able to calculate seasonal indices so that we can use them. And the main way we would use them is deseasonalizing a time series that is getting rid of all of that variation in a seasonal set of data so that we can just look at the overall trends. If we wanted to fit a trend line, we'd usually deseasonalize our data first. Now we're going to start by calculating seasonal indices based on one year's worth of data. You wouldn't normally do this because it's not very helpful. You'd normally be looking at several years worth of data, but we're just going to do one year on its own first because that's the next that's the first step of dealing with multiple years. So we have quarterly sales for a shop and we've got the sales numbers summer, autumn, winter, spring, so we're quarters. And you calculate the seasonal index by taking the value for each season, so we'll calculate each season's index separately. And we divide it by the seasonal average. And what I mean by the seasonal average is we add up all the sales or all the numbers and divide by the number of seasons we have. So because it's quarterly, we divide by 4. If it was monthly, we'd divide by 12. So this is our big important formula for here. So first we find the seasonal average. And then we use the seasonal index formula to calculate a seasonal index for summer, for autumn, for winter, and for spring. Now, whether or not we want to show the working for the average sort of depends if you had any spare time in the test or if you're pushing it. If you're pushing it, I'd probably just do it and come back if you had some spare time. So the average of these numbers Remember to hit enter before you divide by 4, otherwise order of operations will not be your friend. So the seasonal average is 923. So the seasonal index will be each season divided by the seasonal average. So you can see that summer is pretty close to the seasonal average. Autumn's above, winter's above, spring is way below. And we expect our seasonal indices to reflect that. So, seasonal index for summer, value of the season, 920, divided by the seasonal average, 923. Now, we'll usually be asked to round to a particular amount, 0. Point, we'll go three decimal places. 0.997 is summer's seasonal index. So pretty close to 1 because summer is pretty close to the average. Autumn, 1085 divided by 923. 1.176 rounding to, to three decimal places. Winter, 1.345 and spring is 0 0.483. Now remember, these should come out to almost exactly the number of seasons, that is 4. So if you need to, just do a quick check with your calculator. I mean, about one, about one, about one, bit over. Looks like it's going to be fine. Check with your calculator. Because we had to round, it may come out at you know 3.99 or something like that, and that's fine. So that's the seasonal indices for one year's data. But if we only have one year's data, there's not much point doing any smoothing. What becomes really valuable 
is when we have multiple years of data and we can look to see is there a consistent pattern of seasonal indices and those can be really useful for finding overall seasonal indices and using those. So here we've got year one which we had to start with but we've also got two more years now and your method is to repeat that calculation for each year so we find the seasonal indices for each year and then we find the average index for each season So we've already found year one's seasonal indices and we can put them in. We do however also need to find years two and three and we do it exactly the same way we did year one. So we find the seasonal average. We'd already found it for year one, but I'll pop it back in here. So for year two, we'll find the seasonal average. And that's 1028. That plus that plus that plus that. Get the total, divide by four find the seasonal average, add these four up, get the total, divide by four, and year three, what have we got? I'm just cheating. One, one, eight, three. So obviously you'll have to calculate those, but I just did it before, so I'm sure you can work out how to find an average. And we find the seasonal indices. So that is year two. I'm coming from year two and using year two's seasonal average. Make some space here. So for summer, 1035 divided by the seasonal average for year two, 1028. One point zero zero seven. 1180 divided by the seasonal average 1.148 carefully rounding to the right amount so we'll just put the other two in here when you get to year three it's year three's summer to start with divided by the seasonal average. So it's quite logical. There's not anything um, threatening about it. It's just that it's a lot of working and you've got to remember what you're doing. 1.098. I'll just put the others in. So all of these would be year three's data divided by year three's average. So now I've got the seasonal indices for year one, year two, and year three. And you can see there's kind of a pattern there. Spring is always much lower. These two are higher. This one's sort of mid-range. And now to get the overall seasonal indices, we find the average of the summer ones and put it in here. Average of the autumn and pop it in here. So let's that get that happening. 0.997. Oops. And I will go to two decimal places. 
1.03 for summer. For autumn, we do the same. We add up these, we divide by 3, 1.15. Winter, add these, get the total, divide by 3, 1.30. Add these, get the total, divide by 3, 0 0.52. Remember to check that your seasonal indices add up to 4. Four. Excellent. So that is how you find seasonal indices over several years. Now we need to be able to use these seasonal indices to deseasonalize a time series. So this data here is the actual sales data and we want to use these seasonal indices to remove the seasonal variation. And we learned how to deseasonalize a piece of data it's simply um, going back to our formula, the deseasonalized score or figure is the actual number or figure divided by the seasonal index. And we just found the seasonal indices. So we go to the real data and divide every summer value by summer's seasonal index. This is going to be lots of moving up and down. 920 divided by 1.03. Summer's deseasonalized figure for year one was 893. Summer year two. 1035 divided by the same value because it's still summer of 1.03 1005 so it's quite quick then to deseasonalize a whole set of data um, summer again 1299 divided by 1.03 1261 when we get to autumn, 1085 for year one divided by autumn seasonal index of 1.15, deseasonalized data for autumn year one, 943. And we keep repeating that with the relevant seasonal index until we have a set of data that has had the seasonality removed. There's still variation because there's still other things that are happening in the sales. But to the best of our ability, we've taken out the effect of summer, winter, autumn and spring being different.